Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. There is a plan to silence the voices of those who want to check this government. People are being intimidated left, right and center. The independent institutions have been muzzled and some of them have been bought and compromised. As such, Kenyans are choosing to suffer in silence. Others are speaking in undertones. In the midst of all this, we've seen people call out on parliament to stand up and be counted. People are urging the judiciary, the courts, to look at the cases before them because they are the only saviors of the suffering Kenyans. They must exercise their independence and autonomy. But as all this is happening, one person has come out and he has proved that he only fears thunderstorm and fire. Reverend Wainaina of the Old Saints Cathedral today gave a fiery sermon and he maintains that the last time he checked he is both a clergy and a politician and God appointed him to pinpoint the ills in the society and he says he will not keep quiet no matter what if there is a sermon that i have listened to this week it is this sermon and kindly i want you to watch this and tell me what you think about this sermon of course father wanaina has been away for some times and today he was back with a bombshell the context of kenya even while I am away, I engage with Kenyan situation because I am Kenyan. And you remember when I was the provost here, my considered conviction was you cannot look at life in a binary way. That there is holy and there is unholy. There is what is political and there is what is church. When politicians want to use the church to propagate their agenda, they say church and politics is one. When we become very tough on them, they say, no, you do the church things, leave politics to us. I am convinced, as a theologian, I am a politician as well. And politics is talking about the governance of a nation and the church and church leaders must engage in such. So we hear the cry of our country. The cost of living, the depreciation of the Kenyan shilling against the dollar, which is affecting the prices of most of the commodities because we are net importers. When I hear how that cry it is very sad. I hear of a ruling class that doesn't seem to care about the depressing situations of this country. We have a weak parliament that can be used by the executive to add taxes to Kenyans. When this government was campaigning, they said they are going to reduce taxes. In fact, they were criticizing the then government, which they were part of, because of the high taxation. But today, the load of taxation is becoming heavier and heavier. And this is happening at a time when we hear of cases of grand corruption. So on one hand, you tax people. On the other one, the same government gets into scandals of corruption. For example, the edible oil. What has the government to do with edible oil? 
any government project is riddled in a lot of corruption, unfortunately. And then you are told it is not fit for human consumption. Fuel prices are not making sense in Kenya. If you compare with the world, the prices are going down. In Kenya, they are going higher, affecting the lives of the poor Kenyans. Most of the public resources are going into waste, unfortunately. And the controller of budget actually stated publicly, and this is information that you have, that 2.2 billion has been spent in the office of the president and state house between July and September. If you do that calculation, it means that we spend in that office 23 million per day and 1 million per hour. That cannot be sustainable. While I was away, I hear now you've moved from Kenya Power and Lightning to Kenya Power and Darkness. <laughs> and I even hear now you want to spend billions of shillings to unbundle the power lines. This is corruption after corruption after corruption in a government that looked very Christian. And I remember I told them not to hide in Christianity. Christianity is being men and women of integrity. You cannot use Christ to come to power. And then you, when you get there, you become a corrupt leader. The context in Kenya is becoming even sadder with the weakening of the opposition. While we should be having a very strong opposition by this time to check on the government, it's becoming weaker and weaker, and we can't hear the voice of parliament, but also the schemes that you see to silence people. The other day I was reading of somebody threatening Kenyans not to go to court. Kenyans have the right to go to court. And leaders, should, political leaders, I wish they were hearing me, should never threaten Kenyans. They are there because we voted. And they are there as servants, not as bosses. No threats. What even saddens me now is when I hear the voice of the church being silenced. Unfortunately, the church seems to be in bed with the government. They can't challenge the government. They have become recipients of government appointments and recognitions. And that is dangerous. So corruption, if you're not careful, will permeate every part of the church. This cathedral has been known as a place of agitation. This pulpit has been used by many people in the past, archbishops and provosts, as a place of calling on the government. And that is the role that the church must engage. And this church is very central to that. The people of Israel needed a redeemer. Kenya need redemption as well. And this is so appropriate as we come to Christmas. It reminds me of the old days when people like Father Wamugunda, Ndigimona and Zeki, could stand up and look at Moi in the face and tell him, mm -mm, we won't allow you. It reminds me of, uh, of, of, of Desmond Tutu of South Africa, who stood up against the apartheid and was ready to suffer with the people. It reminds me of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., who stood up against the oppression of the Negroes, the, 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 the black Americans, at the time when the idea was unpopular. And for that reason, years down the line, America got a black president, Barack Obama. And ladies and gentlemen, people should not tire because people must speak out.